Okay, Pure sitting here, thing. the FCEF Foundation, sitting with our uh, 2012 Work the Dream uh, Award grant recipient, Matt McLean. He's also a 4 by 200 gold medalist in the uh, London Games this last summer. Uh, thanks for having us here. Thanks for having me, Sean. Yeah, appreciate appreciate taking the time to do this. Um, we wanted to talk to you real quick about what it was like over the past year on working the dream. Um, a little bit about the whole year for you. I mean, you moved across the country. Uh, you were finding new training opportunities, new coaches. And how did that grant help you? I don't think the grant just helped me. I think it, you know made it possible for me to do what I wanted to do. It's very difficult to become 100% financially independent coming straight out of college, and that's what I did. And on top of that, I moved to, across the country uh, and took up training in an entirely new, unfamiliar area. So that just compounded whatever difficulties that I may have already had. And without the grant, I really don't think I would have been able to focus the essential time and energy that I did focus on swimming, uh, especially during an Olympic year. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have what, that grant. What was that? Two things. One, you didn't have any connections in California where you went no. to, right? And and the second part was, what was that training like? I mean, you know, we, we all played sports and a couple hours after school. I mean, what was it really, what's it like to train for the Olympics in Olympic year? I mean, how swimming is always a very grueling sport. It's a very lonely sport because you're always looking at that black line on the bottom of the pool and it's very physically and mentally exhausting and especially in an Olympic year because the focus involved is just unbelievable um, and to put in the amount of required physical and mental work especially in an Olympic year because everyone finds a way to elevate their game during an Olympic year it's really hard when you're trying to balance something like a part-time job, which I had previously done in the pool office. So having the grant really allowed me to get the proper rest that I needed and really dedicate everything and leave no, you know, leaf unturned in trying to do whatever I had to do in order to accomplish my goals. So how many days a week is, is training like this, this past year? How many days a week was it? Uh, Urbanchik has a really cool program. Uh, we know what to expect every workout. It was six days a week. Each day had a different objective. Each workout had a different objective that were, it was very you know, clearly cut. And even Sundays, which were off, I would go to the pool quite often and just do a loosen up because during an Olympic year, there's nothing that you want to look back on and say, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. So, I mean, you were spending upwards of eight, 12 hours a day at the pool? Not quite that much. Not necessarily in the water, but at the pool. Before I, yeah. before, um, I got the grant when I was working in the pool office, yeah, my entire day was at the pool, but, you know, during the year, it was just generally two, two and a half workouts, two, two and a half hour workouts a day, and okay. two to two and a half. So, five to six hours a day. Ballpark. Yeah. Do they include lunches in that as well? <laughs> Um, just kidding. So, did um, w why why was California the key? And and you know, if you didn't have that that grant, would you have just stayed in Charlottesville, or you know, what made you say that going to California was gonna make that difference? I think um, Mark, my coach at Virginia had a lot of influence on me going out there. He thought the change of scenery would be good for me, and he thought that it would present me with a really good opportunity to train with John, who's known as one of the greatest distance coaches of all time. And I think that Mark is too, but I just think he's really undercredited. And uh, that's why I'm back there now. That's right. It's and couldn't be take happier note, to be Mark back. Bernardino. But I just really feel like, you know, I felt like at that point in time, that was the right move for me. And... It, it was a good opportunity and you know I love John to death and I'm thankful for everything that he, he gave me because he's really I've been very fortunate to have coaches that give back everything that you give them and John and Mark are two of the finest examples there are of you know coaches who embody that spirit that's awesome um, let's talk a little bit about how they coached you 
to get to that uh, Olympic level, and specifically uh, John Abinacek over the past year. Um, tell me a little bit about Omaha and, and what was it like that build up to, to Olympic trials? The build up for Olympic trials is unlike anything that, unless you've experienced, you know, you, you can't compare it to anything really, especially if it's something you've dedicated your, your life to because you're going after something that indicates that you've reached the pinnacle of the sport. And in, in, in any sport, that's a huge deal, but I really think something like swimming where you know it represents something that's supposed to be as holy good and altruistic as the Olympics is really something special. So it's so mentally grueling and physically grueling and exhausting every day that you know, when you finally realize that you've put in the work and you've done everything that you can do and you can kind of come around and say, okay, now it's time to go. I have to get ready to, to race and get my confidence up. It's a pretty cool change that, you know, you put your mind through uh, to get in the racing mindset going into the meet. So if you were in the pool office at the same time, it probably wouldn't have helped your focus at all. Worrying about the schedules and then worrying about training, trying to be the other. Working in the pool office was kind of mind-numbing at times sifting through you know thousands of forms for swim lessons but you know it wouldn't, it wouldn't I'm thankful for the that, opportunity right. to have that job when I had it because I needed it right right but I really think that you know in any situation there is a best option and I think when I had the opportunity to work in the office which I'm thankful for that was my best option and I think for the year leading up to trials not having to work in the pool office was my best option really made that um, really made that difference I'm very thankful for that opportunity so to show how difficult that you know making the team was that difference let's let's talk real quick about so top six go to the relay top six at Olympic trials a four by 200 go on to the relay now in that top six I mean well it was Phelps Lochte you um Ricky Barron's um, Connor Dwyer, Connor really Dwyer. Yeah. and Davis Tarwater made the relay too which is just I think a testament to how deep the United States is in the 200 freestyle it's historically one of our deepest and I mean, best events we're talking about uh, yeah. where the US is a powerhouse in that yeah. event and uh, it, it was an honor to be you know among the other athletes who have made the team in that event and the fact that there I think there were about four or five tenths of a second between third and seventh and I think that just speaks volumes for the depth that our country shows in that event absolutely absolutely I mean that's just that's just like a phenomenal stacked team to really get beat um geez. so when you're there you're you're in in London um and, and you're you know you're you're reaching the pinnacle of the work and the dream um you know what's the what's the focus? You know it's like game day, right before game day, what, right before the race. What's that focus? The, what, how do you, the focus how do you is representing centered? your country yeah. to the best of your ability because you know the Olympics, like I said before, is really something that's supposed to transcend everything else, and to be a part of that and what it represents and the history behind it. When you put it in perspective, it really represents something more than just what you've accomplished, and to realize that you are about to become a part of that story tradition is a really cool feeling and you just know that you're ready to go and especially representing a country like the United States because it's not only the pinnacle of the sport but it's the country that represents you know the pinnacle of excellence so taking both those things into account representing the United States at the highest level there's no bigger honor in sports it must have been uh like breathtaking to stand on the podium there. I mean, I didn't get to stand on the podium because I was only on the prelims relay, but okay. it, it was just nonetheless, it was a great experience. Did were you at opening ceremonies? Did you? I don't know. Some of the swimmers, some. Yeah, I chose not to go because I think it was four days before my race, and I didn't want to. You get you know, the, the risk of you know I wind up standing for five to eight hours or whatever was required, and I just. Could have twisted point, an ankle. My, my legs could use the rest. You know? Really? Yeah. Really? Is, is there a lot of obligations like that during the Olympics where you, you, you know, you have there, to There choose? weren't too many. They they take very good care of us, and the USA Swimming staff was very good about getting us whatever we needed at that point just to be ready to race. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. 
Um, okay. Back to to work in that dream. London happened. Gold medal. Um, you know, what's what's the dream now? What where where are we focused at and what, you know, what, what's that dream? Honestly, the dream now is to just do whatever I can do to continue to represent the foundation well. And Fran was someone that I really looked up to, so I think doing whatever I can to truly continue to embody his spirit um, is my main focus. And obviously there are, you know, process goals along the way and there are final result goals that I have, but a huge one is just continuing to work at that level that I know Fran would like to see us work at. Yeah, there's no doubt he the, he was working at, at the elite levels yeah. of, of conditioning. Oh, yeah. So. I would always ask Mark to do the same sets as friends. Yeah? yeah? Is he still uh, giving out sets like that, Bernardino, down there? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of times where we'll talk, and, you know, Fran's still the team record holder in the 3,000 for time, and I'm second, so I'm still chasing that. So, well, can you get it if you're not at UVA anymore? Is it a pool record, or do you have to be? I think it's I think it's a training group record. I think we'll call it that. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, obviously, um, you know, being being our first and being a member of the FCEF um, as a grant recipient, you, you know, we we always will continually try to help promote you the best we can, um, just as you continue to promote us. And we, of course, want to say thank you for this past year. I mean. In our first year of of the the grant awardee, we had a guy make it all the way to the Olympics, and not only make it to the Olympics, be a part of a relay gold medal team is phenomenal. Um, it says wonders for us, for you, for an UVA, um, for the United States, and uh, we really appreciate. I think any time that anyone can have the opportunity to have their name associated with Fran's name, it's a it's a huge honor that they should absolutely live you know to the fullest. So. Thank you for the opportunity. Definitely. Well, enjoy Golden Goggles. Thank I'll you. Head down there. Let me uh, go get all jazzed up for it. Get, yeah, put on your fancy outfit. Get my makeup done. There you go. There you go. All right. Thank you.